here's some suspension parts I haven't gotten to yet. Um, I've these are the tie rods. They have a ball joint on each each joint here. It, it looks like this one is naked. I've uh, started taping them up because I'm going to sandblast them. I got to make sure not to get any sand in that joint. Um, granted, when I'm done, it's painted and it's ready to go back together. I'm going to blast a lot of um, grease through there to, to flush anything out, get the old grease out. It'll also push out any um, any sand if that might have worked its way in there. Um, also, these these uh, <laughs> rubbers that were on there aren't in the best shape, so it's a bit of a gamble to see if these are any good anyway. Um, but, you know, I thought I'd spend a couple minutes, clean them up, put them back on, uh, see how it goes. If they're loose, if they, if, they, if they have play in them, I'll simply replace them. No problem. But, uh, you know, if, if I replace every car, every part on this car just because it's old, yeah, you get the idea. Well, would you look at there? Brand new parts. Well, not exactly. They sure look better than they did before. You know, after spending so much time doing the um, doing the chassis, doing something like like these guys, I uh, sandblasted them, primed them, and painted them all in like an afternoon. Well, like you know, doing other stuff in between, but. It seems so fast. I got something done in a couple hours instead of a couple months. Um, that, that's very nice. So, yeah, a couple hours of cleaning and painting, uh, definitely worth uh, trying it out because um, this is a restoration, not, uh, not just buying in the, you know, new parts. When I was a kid, I used to uh, read the Austin Healey, the, the Victoria British Sprites part catalog relentlessly. <clears throat> I take care of it with me to school and every chance I get I, I would look at it. And I always thought it would be super cool to build a car completely from brand new parts. You know, have, have a brand new uh, Sprite from, you know, aftermarket parts. Um, as I've gotten older though, um, uh, there's something about originality that I really like. Uh, I, I worked as an art preparator for about six months, mostly building crates for uh, for artwork. But uh, there was restore art restorers that came in, and they would spend just hours with Q-tips, like cleaning tiny little details. And you know, they could have just painted over it like that that Jesus picture. But uh, you know, having having the original parts if you can have them, is, you know, keeps the soul of the car. Well, good morning. Today we're going to uh, fix up these uh, tie rod ends. Um, I already did one this morning to see if it worked. Uh, a brand new grease gun. I was a little nervous. I was worried about uh, whether the European size would fit on the British size, but uh, seems to latch on there and squirt some grease through there. So we're going to start with, with this other end. Um, we're going to start by squirting grease through it to uh, flush out the old grease and uh, make sure it's, it's full of good stuff. until I see clean grease. As you can see, that was pretty nasty stuff. Try and get down here in the other side as well. And just clean it all up in there. We, we sandblasted it, so we want to make sure that uh, there's nothing Nothing in there that can uh, rub against the ball or the socket and uh, grind it away. It looks pretty clean now. Let's take some of that 
get the simply goes on top of it and I, I found it's a little bit like putting a tire on you can get uh, one side of it hooked and then uh, go around it with um, screwdriver or this this little tool and once that's in place it's one of these uh, snap rings it's really more like a wire than a snap ring but uh, it's springy and it goes all the way at the bottom to hold the boot in place. Sometimes it helps to put the eyelet, let it apart, put it down in there. So, it looks better than it did before. Then, with its uh, in place, uh, squirt a little bit of extra grease in there, and it fills up the boot. Do three pumps. Not how you uh, replace the, the boot. so it doesn't collect dirt. Voila. So one of these rings snapped while I was putting, putting it on. So I'm going to show you a different method for securing these. Um, if you ever done old school fencing or uh, closing up bags, uh, there, there are these things. Uh, basically, you put them on there, hook both ends together, twist it around, and it, it tightens it up. Fairly simple. Let's see if they're big enough to wrap around this guy. I think they will be. Oh, it looks like it's just, looks like it's made for it. So, I'm gonna wrap that around there. This hooks in there, and you give it a spin. In, in there and it tightens it up you come along with your <laughs> my dad used to call well he still does he calls these dikes I, I don't know if we can call them that anymore I want to tighten that up a little bit more dikes for diagonal cutters get your mind out of the gutters so uh, cut that off and then we, we don't want that sticking out, so we're going to push it over to the side. We're going to try to at least. There. There. That'll hold that boot down on there nice and tight. Probably tighter than, than the little springy thingies. So, happy with that. I'm doing some assembly of the, uh, the front wishbone, uh, suspension parts, and um, usually uh, I forget how things go together, so I go to the parts manual. If you look at the parts manual, it's not a clear exploded view. It shows this on top and that on bottom, and that's not how it goes. Um, here's my book I just got. Uh, it is a uh, factory original by uh, Philip Pigeot. I'm gonna guess that's French. Um, anyway, uh, better picture of the suspension. I could go back to my videos, but uh, I'm not. Anyway, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna hope to get this in the the, the right order. Uh, otherwise, I'll just have to take it apart and do it again.
So, um, according to the picture, this goes on the bottom here, which makes sense. And then this goes that. If I'm, if I'm doing this right, that's the front, that's the front. Cool. So then, got brand new bolts for all this. Oops. Through here, through here, all the way down through here. And these are these are nylock, so uh, they won't be falling off. Um, I don't know. They probably didn't have nylock on here originally, but uh, this is a suspension part. You don't want it falling off. Um, I'm just gonna put this on finger tight. For now, until I get everything in place, make sure I, I didn't um, I didn't put it on backwards. I have a slightly dyslexic tendencies. <laughs> like when I flip the car over uh, on the rotisserie, I can never remember which side is the, the driver's side. So uh, you know, I have to be careful about things. Shiny. Remember I took these off and found original paint? The ones that were on there aren't terrible. I've seen worse. But, uh, you know, while we're here, we might as well make it nice. So it goes on there. should I do? The uh, trunnion, I think this is called, up here. These are, I left the old bushings in, in place while I was painting and stuff to uh, protect things. Hope I can get these out. And they're pretty good. Take some work to do. Okay, I'm gonna work on that later. Uh, you see, I got a uh, new. I'm putting uh, polyurethane bushings all over the place. And these lovely guys. And uh, polyurethane. That means these will never ever have to be replaced again. With uh, with the rubber, even if you, uh, even if you're just sitting in a garage, it will start to deteriorate. Um, and and these uh, do much better. See, it comes with special grease. The grease goes inside there, and that that's the pivot point. The outside uh, stays firm. Uh, I don't have to put the grease on now. These literally just get shoved in there. it you can grease grease it up and uh, that becomes the, the fulcrum of the, the point all right um, so yeah things need tightened up I need to make sure I got it in the right order uh, everything pointing the correct direction I think I have um, we also do these guys I bought new ones because the ones I had on there uh, the ones I was taking off rather um, we're breaking each, each time I took one off it would snap the, the head off of it um, I don't remember how these go I think it's simply like this yeah something like that 
goes in there. The washer on top. Oh, seems like I forgot something. Like that. Washer on top. Kind of like that. similar fashion. Again, these have nylocks, locks, so I'm just going to put them on finger tight. Uh, with nylocks, locks, if you tighten them up, you get a couple turns, a couple times at it, but uh, it starts to wear out the nylon and then it doesn't lock like in nylock. lock. So um, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm going to work on this off camera not to bore you. Okay, I warned you, didn't I? This is on backwards. Well, actually, it's it's the wrong one. It's supposed to be this one. This would foul against here. So, this goes here, not this. I did warn you. Suspension. <laughs> I'll do that in air quotes. Suspension. I know, the, the springs aren't on it, but uh, this plate drops down and the spring goes in there. But, um, I learned some things putting this on. Uh, here, let me show you up here. It's still dirty, I haven't cleaned it up yet, but look down here. See this uh, Millennium Falcon looking washer thing? This comes off. This is how it looked. I, get, I squeezed the bushing in there, and then this guy popped off and I went, oh, well that would make it easier. So uh, I need to put that put that on and then uh, get this guy on, uh, you know, pop these off and, and put the other A-arm on. Here's an neat trick for you. So uh, I was sandblasting and I decided I couldn't see what I'm doing anymore. So I, I pulled the plexiglass out. Um, this I, I cleaned it up uh, best I could, uh, soap and water. Then I, I hit it with some 400 grit. It had it from the sandblasting. It had a nice frosted look. I hit it with some 400 wet uh, wet dry paper, and then it then it was smoother, but uh, not so good. Um, and then I, I started doing what's called torch polishing. Get your torch and you can see I've already done some of it before and after you know this doesn't have to be perfect this isn't going in a museum but uh, it basically just melts the top layer and and lets it flow out a bit so uh, you can see through it you know I, I could go get another piece of plexiglass but uh, when I was at the hardware store I forgot it's uh, they're about 10, 10 bucks a piece for uh, this size, and they're pre-cut to this size. I, I made it to a standard standard size that they had in the store. But um, this polish, you know, compared to what I was looking at before, is, is going to be like night and day. Hey, 
it's always funny how the second side goes quicker. If you liked this video, click the like button below. If you want to come along on the ride as we complete this project, click the subscribe button. If you want to make sure Google reminds you every time there's a new video, click the alarm bell. Your support is very much appreciated.